It is championship night once again, and now for the final time in Series 11 of Porsche Club of America Sim Racing, we're going to crown one more champion. We've crowned five champions already over the last week or two, and now in the pro class, the highest level class, we've got four drivers left in contention to battle for the highest honor. Welcome back to the virtual Daytona International Speedway, and welcome to the final round of Series 11 for, this, for the pro class in PCA Sim Racing. My name is Joey Tebbin, and alongside me in the booth for this championship finale is Ewan O'Leary. Behind the scenes, as always, is our producer, Ramiro Augustine Cisneros. Ewan, it has been championship week, or championship fortnight, I guess we can say. Five champions so far, and just one left in the highest level, the uh, most experienced level of competition. It's been intense already. I have a feeling this is going to be the most intense one. Yeah, it may well be. It's a great place to host a finale as well. The Daytona International Speed, where they, with its high speed banking and 12 turns, should provide some great racing, just in terms of an actual race for the win. Whether that's going to involve the championship contenders or not, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, the ball is in Christopher Pies's court, I suppose you can say. He comes into today with a six-point lead after seeing his lead decrease by a third two weeks ago. He still got uh, those points ahead of Thomas Briggs, which means the top two, would be good enough for him today. And so far, having a championship lead has been very, very important in winning this championship, Ewan. So Christopher Pies in a good position in the lead, but Thomas Briggs in contention, Logan Grado in contention, Mark Nister in contention as well. 25 points is what you get for a win in this series, so all you need to do to stay in contention, Ewan, is to be within 25 points. If you're 25 points back like Mark Nister, that does make things a little bit more difficult, but we've got the live calculators ready, and we will be calculating all of those numbers over the course of tonight, and we'll be ready to crown one more champion after all of this. But so far this season, we've already crowned five champions, and now we welcome the, uh, the carousel of entertainment, the big group of faces, some faces you may have not seen yet this season. These are all of your champions so far this season. Meet Alan Owens, meet Mehmet Karachai, meet Derek Dirksen, meet Klaus Nielsen, and you'll also meet Kevin San Diego, who will be here in uh, in voice form only, but we'll see him in a couple of moments as well. So we'll start with you down in the bottom there, Alan. You were the uh, the first champion of the bunch, representing the Upper Canada region in the entry class, in the entry A class. You were one of the uh, drivers taking their first steps into PCA sim racing this season. How do you think it went so far, and uh, are you looking forward to stepping up a little bit into the higher ranks next season? Uh, really looking forward to getting classed and uh, and racing uh, in in one of the you know getting out of entry. Um, learned a lot. The instructors were great. Um, really helped me get to understand what PCA sim racing is about, and the organization is just fantastic. Loving it. It is indeed, and I, I did a little bit of cyber stalking on all you guys do, as commentators always do. And Alan, I've seen that you've done some uh, real life track stuff yourself at uh, Mo Sport and at Calabogie in Canada. How much of that transferred to the sim, and I guess vice versa? How much did the sim translate into real life when you took that back? Uh, yeah, I, I, I've gone wheel to wheel with people on the track in real life, so I, I think I have that respect for fellow competitors and you know keeping it safe out there. Um, well, Alan. So Congrats on uh, all you've done this season, and uh, I think we're all looking forward to seeing you in one of those higher classes next season and uh, racing with the big guys. Thanks, Joey. Appreciate that. And now we'll move uh, slightly over. Unfortunately, we can't see Kevin San Diego's face, but Kevin is a driver who I and many viewers of RaceBot TV are very familiar with. I'm not going to sing the song today, don't worry. But Kevin, you've uh, seemingly done everything in iRacing Sim Racing. You've done Formula 3, you've done production cars, you've done dirt trophy trucks by my own doing. How did this compare in, uh, in a new league experience for you? Yeah, you know, it's, it was fun. We had uh, a good time driving the GT3, GT3R uh, this season. You know, I haven't been in a GT3 car probably in, I don't know, 16, 18 months, something like that. So it was, it was a good time to get back in it and try to figure out how to drive an ABS car again. It was uh, definitely good to be on track. I took a good three months off uh, since the holidays and just trying to get back up to speed. but. Fun racing with these guys, you know, glad I'm out of the entry uh, program. Hopefully I get slotted into pro this next year and we'll see how it goes from there. I think pro class will definitely be a good place for Kevin San Diego. I think everybody at home is probably asking where in the world is Kevin San Diego? See, I couldn't help myself, but Kevin, I'm glad to see you here. I'm sure lots of people are as well and uh, looking forward to seeing you probably in the pro class next season. Absolutely. Thanks, Joey. Good to talk to you. 
Always good to talk to Kevin San Diego. It's going to be good to talk to one more driver as we move from uh, Northern California in the Redwood region with Kevin. We move down to SoCal in the uh, Orange Coast region. Mehmet Karachai was your champion in the challenge class. Mehmet, you had a very consistent season. One win, three seconds. Is uh, consistency something you usually pride yourself on in sim racing? Oh, we can't hear Mehmet. How about now? Can you hear me okay? There we go. Now we got you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I try. Consistency is the key, right? But it, it's it's hard. You know, like I had some, you know, like good races. I had some, you know, like unfortunate, well, own mistakes, spin outs and stuff like that and some recovery rights. But I have to say, overall, it was a, you know, like a super fun season. It was, you know, like the competition was, you know, it, it was right up there. Uh, Casey and Kevin and you know like they were they were uh, they gave me a run for my money. I actually I hope I did the same for them and uh, they made it they made the season very interesting and very fun. Was very interesting and a couple of moments ago before we came on air we had you with your Porsche in the background in your garage. We got a slightly different camera now with some of the uh, the technical things, but you had that uh, beautiful car in your background. Talk us through the, your uh, your real life experiences in the Porsche Club of America. Well. I mean, I, I just wanted to, I've been watching, you know, like some, some shows and I just wanted to get into racing and I was like, oh, how do I do that? You know, like, well, I don't have a lot of money, but, you know, like I ended up this, you know, like 986 and then soon after I bought it, it's, you know, like, uh, it gave me some grief and I had to fix it. I worked on it so, so much for so long and now it's my baby, right? You know, like it's a labor of love. I can't, I cannot get rid of it, you know, like. It takes the top spot in my garage. There you go. Hopefully we'll see it on camera next time out if you win the championship next season. And uh, we'll see you then in a couple of yep, months, I guess. Yep. yep. All right. Now we'll move up one more step. That's the, uh, the magic of the PCA ladder. We go back to Upper Canada. We go back to Ontario. Derek Dirksen was your champion in the sport class. And Derek, I was in the booth for your championship race, and it was just a roller coaster of emotions. I think you, I think you won the championship and lost the championship about ten different times, and then in the end, it finally flipped your way. How how was that from being inside the car? It's it's interesting, you know, you're you're racing and you're doing the math at the same time, trying to figure out uh, where do I have to be or where does he have to be, uh, and uh, yeah, very interesting battle. It's always good to hear another Canadian accent as well. You guys well represented in the uh, the Porsche Club of America. But I see those uh, those boxes in the background. Are those new sim boxes? Is, it, is this no, a recent those, construction or are those just... No, uh, this is, I'm in the basement. I'm in a storage <laughs> room. So it's, there you go. it's where the junk goes. I can't blame you. you. You don't want to see what's behind this green screen. It's just as much of a mess or more of a mess, I should say. But uh, Derek, it was a lot of fun calling your races this season. Congrats on the championship. And uh, maybe we'll see you in the pro class fighting with Kevin next season as well. Yeah, thanks very much or even the club class first. That might be the first step forward. And speaking <laughs> of the club class, we do have our uh, our final and most recent champion, Mr. Klaus Nielsen from the Lone Star region down in Texas. Klaus, it's it's only been 24 hours since you won your last championship. How, uh, how have the last 24 hours been? Nope, we can't hear you, Klaus. Can you hear Let's see now? if we can get the mic path. Nope, now we got you. Okay, I'll see if I can do this. Awesome. Uh, push to talk thing. Yeah, so it's been a, it, it was a roller coaster too, right? You know, I had a terrible race yesterday. I made one mistake in the bus stop and um, had to pay for that the rest of the of the evening. <clears throat> At that point, it was really just, you know, how are the other guys doing? And as it turns out, I was a little better off than I had calculated first because I forgot I had a, a, uh, a drop race that actually had some points in it. So that helped me out a little bit. But all in all, you know, I was lucky. It was my own doing yesterday for sure. But you are the champion indeed. And as you are the most recently crowned champion, all of you guys are champions, but I guess Klaus is, uh, is sort of the king, the most recent champion. You have any advice for our pros as they settle into their own championship battle today in just a couple of minutes? Oh, got to get back on the push to talk, Klaus. Yeah, I'll try. I'll see you here. It's always so, hard. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been watching those guys. It's just, you know, incredible how close they are and so good they are. It's just amazing to watch, and that's very interesting. I wish them all the best of luck tonight. Well, Klaus, Derek, Alan, Mehmet, and Kevin, congrats to all of you on your success this season and on your championships. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you back here when Series 12 gets started in, uh, in September in just a couple of months. 
But uh, until then, I guess uh, watch along tonight, cheer your fellow champions on, and we'll see you soon. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks, Joey. See Thanks, you. Joey. Thank you. Thanks. Congrats to all of those champions. Great to hear a, uh, a cacophony of voices, you and a cacophony of accents. None of them, though, with your uh, with your nice English accent. So it's going to be good to hear that. Thanks for that. Um, there uh, nice go. is a bit of a subjective term. There, I gave I you a compliment but... for once. Uh, <laughs> thanks. But uh, but yeah, glad to be back again for one final time in season 11. It's the final championship finale, as you say, and we're in qualifying right now. Really looking forward to how this is going to go, because as I said before, I think Daytona is a really great place to go racing anyway, in terms of actually just having a good race. But in terms of having a good finale, I'm hoping that we are going to get that here today. And uh, with the amount of drivers we have involved in the championship fight, then it is great to watch. We probably believe it's going to be between pies and breaks as we've already talked about but uh, you just never know and uh, i'm very much looking forward to seeing and finding out who it's going to be and all things considered with uh, with all the drivers in contention they all know they have the possibility of winning the championship hopefully by the end of tonight we'll also get to uh, talk to one of these champions on camera hear their voice see their face that's what we're going to be looking forward to at the end of the night. But for now, it is qualifying time. Laps on the board will now count. They had about 10 minutes of practice just to get themselves contained and get themselves back in the rhythm, get their bearings. And now it's time for laps to actually count. This is Christopher Pies on your screen right now in that number 14 championship leader. Doesn't necessarily need to win the race with the amount of points he has today. Does need to finish up high in the order, though, and... I don't think he's thinking about math right now. I think he's just thinking about going as fast as possible, giving himself the best position possible, and starting from poles the way to do that. Yeah, exactly. He'll be thinking about getting the best qualifying lap, and that's all he can do here in qualifying. However, if it turns out like he did at Mugello two weeks ago, where he found himself a little bit behind in qualifying and found himself chasing in the race, chasing Thomas Briggs, then he'll be a little bit more worried. Then he'll start to do the maths equations. But a top two would seal the title for Pies today, no matter what everybody else does. Even if Briggs wins, he can't overhaul Pies if he follows him all the way home. So uh, that's what he's got to aim at. But a top two in this field is pretty difficult. And at the end of the day, Pies has only managed that on two occasions out of the six rounds so far this season. Christopher Cook gets the first lap on the board. Logan Grado immediately eclipses that. And here comes Chris Pies across the line. Where is he going to put himself on lap number one? Still waiting for the lap to load in. There it is. P2 for Chris Pies. P3 now as Robbie Prescott puts it up on the top of the table. This is early days in the qualifying session, though, You and Solo qualifying. You get three laps on your own. So no draft, no other cars in the track. But you're definitely going to see those lap times come down as this is also an open setup series. You can adjust your qualifying setup. It doesn't necessarily need to be the same as your race setup. And so far, Robbie Prescott's qualifying setup and the qualifying driver, for that matter, seem to have the most speed. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be very important to use that speed and get yourself up towards the front here at Daytona. Because as we've uh, or as we do talk about so often in Daytona racing, it's not that it's difficult to overtake, but you just want to be in that front group when there is sort of splits in the field, which there will be here today. You want to be in that front one. So you've got to be uh, good in qualifying to make it there. And Thomas Briggs, looking at these early lap times, has got to do that little bit better than he's doing this opening lap at the moment. He's in the back 25% of the field right now. It's not where you want to be. There is your, uh, your order on the side of your screen now. Three championship contenders, Logan Grado, Mark Nister, and Christopher Pies in the top five. And just as Ewan said, the, uh, the fourth of them all the way at the back right now. 18th place where he is right now, just behind uh, Derek Cyphers. Here's Michael Polasek. Good to see him back here for uh, one final race. Definitely a driver who probably could have won the championship this season if he was around for the entirety of it. Showed up for Road America and for Zandvoort, won those two races. Logan Grado crosses the line to put it back up on pole. Christopher Pies back up to third. But as I was saying about Polasek, if he was here for the full season, he has a 100% win record in the two races he... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's... Uh... It's a really impressive season, I guess, by all accounts for Michael Polasek. And so it, you could say, yeah, he might well have won the series uh, if, it, he'd, if he'd have been here the entire season. I mean, 
equally. He might have won, if, even if he was here at the previous round for round six, there's nothing to say that he wouldn't have maybe gone on to win that one. Where would that have put him? Well, it might have put him third in the championship and right up there in terms of in the mix for today's title decider. But uh, you just never know. Motorsport is full of what ifs and he'll be hoping that he can win today at least just as a bit of a uh, sort of celebration at the end of the season, if you like, uh, to end it on a high. And speaking of what ifs, Bryce Rodriguez, our defending winner, victorious at Mugello last week for the first time. He's also only been here for about half the season. Started at Road America, then uh, made it one spot higher up at Zandvoort, and then ended up winning the race at Mugello. If we had him for the full season, we could have a five-car championship fight, a six-car championship fight even. Robbie Prescott on your screen right now, a driver who's had a lot of speed this season, the uh, satellite racing driver in those familiar bright blue and bright red colors. Hasn't quite had the consistency he wanted. He had a couple of great results in uh, early on in the season. VIR in the Red Bull ring. Just wasn't quite uh, as consistent as he'd like at Road America or Zandvoort. Christopher Pies on his final lap. Knows he's not going to improve. Bails out of it. And actually elects to practice a pit entry, Ewan. That's going to be a big thing in this race. Saving fuel, fuel strategy, pit strategy. Might as well practice a, uh, a pit entry. Because those are always difficult at Daytona. Very important to practice, so it's a, it's a good job he's got that done. Thomas Briggs makes his way into the line. Only 20th, though. A real disaster for the driver trying to take this title away from Christopher Pies. I've got to say that I, I was listening in hard, and I don't know whether it was just uh, in my ears or not, but it sounded to me like Briggs ran out of fuel and started to splutter towards the line there as he was on his final lap. Oh, dear. Michael Polasek puts it up into P2, but... That is, uh, that is unfortunate stuff for Thomas Briggs, very much on the back foot, and maybe a slight miscalculation of the fuel, miscalculation of the strategy. That puts him very much on the back foot, but anything is possible. There's not that big of a buffer. If Christopher Pies runs into trouble and finishes very, very deep in the field, even scores zero points, all Thomas Briggs would have to do to uh, outscore him is recover a 14th place finish to uh, jump him in the championship standing. So it's all very possible. Matthew Siddall's qualifying run comes to an end back on the oval. He finishes P8. Only a couple more moments left to go. Rob Rodriguez Jr., I believe, will get one more lap in. He's got time left on the clock to do it. Question is, will it improve him from P24, though? As I think he's one of the only cars on track. That's uh, very few remaining out on the circuit now as a result of the fact that everybody pretty much has completed their lap time. So it's uh, just up to Rodriguez to try and improve. He's got a minute to get to the line, which he will just about manage, but will be pretty much at the end of time after that. It's uh, been a good qualifying for Christopher Pies as he tries to win the title here. Sixth place is not bad at all. He's on those front three rows. I guess the quest now for everybody is that run down towards turn one that everyone's going to be focusing on and just how I can get through there cleanly. I should clarify one thing while we're here. Christopher Pies, at least on my screen, actually has 85 points in the championship. I'm going to do some math myself, but we'll have to keep that in consideration. 86 points, not quite his total, if I'm not mistaken. So that is one less point that Briggs and Grado and Nister need to think about. That brings Mark Nister in contention, because if he scores 25 points, that would put him on 86 points. That would be one point ahead of Christopher Pies, though, if he scores no points. So we'll uh, we'll get those calculations going. Rob Rodriguez Jr. brings it to the line. It's going to be a race against the clock, but he's going to get there just in time. And for all that effort, he will get one tenth of a second. Is that going to improve him position wise at all? I think the answer is unfortunately no, because I'm still seeing him all the way down there in P24. Bad luck there for Mr. Rodriguez. But enough. Championship leader rounds out the top six. Then down in P7 was Leif Peterson. Not going to be a championship contender, but definitely going to be a podium contender, maybe even a win contender as he starts alongside Matthew Siddall. Mark Nister starts P9. He's one of your championship contenders who needs a very good day. Christopher Cook starts alongside him to round out the top 10. Chris Braun, P11. Derek Cyphers, P12. They round out the top dozen. Nick Facciolo will start from Unlucky 13th alongside Joe Sinclair. James Huth and Lyle Eady down to P16. And Ed Eisenring and Chad Henson representing Connecticut down 
down there in P18. Michael Patterson and Rodney Campbell, a pair of green cars, round out the, uh, the top 20. Thomas Briggs, championship contender. Christopher Pies' closest rival, not quite as far forward in the grid as he would like. He's going to be looking forward from 21st place as he starts alongside the Dunkin' Donuts colored Nick Melarano Mobile. And down in uh, the final row, Richard Woodruff and Peter Sigourney, 25th and 26th. I believe uh, Richard Woodruff, or not Richard Woodruff, uh, Chad Sosnowski, and one other driver was up there in 24th place, but my memory does not serve me correct, so I can't tell you exactly who that was. But Ewan, it is going to be a short pace lap here, I believe. We'll get everybody gridded up just before the bus stop, just before the Le Mans chicane, and we'll go racing here to crown one more champion in just a couple of moments. Yeah, very much looking forward to finding out who it's going to be. It's just past midnight in Sim. In the end of January, it's Daytona's 24-hour kind of time here in Sim. 21 degrees Celsius down on the track. I'll translate that for you, Joey. It's about high 50s Fahrenheit, maybe at low 60s. And it's very cold, I think, is the uh, sort of summation you can have from that. Cold indeed. Cold in Florida is very different from cold in, the, in Connecticut, but it is still cold all the same. And I've done a little bit of math. I've looked at the individual race results for uh, every race, and Christopher Pies scored 12, 25, 21, 15, and 12 points. That does add up to 85 points. So make sure to uh, keep that in our calculations, and uh, we will make sure that we, uh, that we keep that one point in mind. But for the moment, we got to think about two guys who aren't fighting for the championship. Two guys who have been stars in their own right. Bryce Rodriguez and Michael Polasek, both winners this season. And believe it or not, actually, the winners of the last three races at uh, Mugello, at Zanvoort, and at Road America. Will they be able to do battle for the win? Will they engage in a little bit of civil war and uh, fall back in the field, opening the door for some other contenders? can only wait and see as the iRacing Porsche pace car crawls through NASCAR turns three and four and prepares to take its final journey down pit lane. Safety cars are possible in this series, but we haven't seen one in quite a while, and it's usually pretty clean on lap one, so don't expect that to return. Hard left onto pit lane. Bryce Rodriguez takes control of the field, and for one final time in PCA Sim Racing, it's time to crown a champion. The top class, the pro class, takes the green, and Bryce Rodriguez leads us across the line for the first time. It's a heavy braking zone into turn one, though. Michael Polasek tries to slot in line. He's got Logan Grado looking to his inside, though, looking to take second away. It's not going to happen, though. Polasek hangs on to second with a wide berth. Grado in third, Prescott in fourth, filing through, turns two and three for the first time. Gets very, very dicey through there, and now the heaviest braking zone of the lap so far into the International Horseshoe, side by side for fifth. Around goes the number 23 in the middle of the field. All the way to the back goes the number 23. Bad luck early on, but other than that, Ewan, clean through the first sector. Yeah, it looks like a clean start and a good start for everybody as well. That's all you need here to start off at Daytona. Make sure you are single file and in the group at the start. Matthew Siddle, unfortunately, can't boast of that accolade, I'm afraid. He's tapped around by a lightest blue machine there, I'm afraid, and he wasn't the only one to go around. There were a couple of trips to the outside in the grass as well. Uh, Matthew Siddle, actually, the only driver so far to have to return back to pit lane. He's seemingly got suspension damage looking at that replay there and so he's had to go back Joe Sinclair was one of the others who uh, won around he might have been the one who was spun one end 180 degrees at the International Horseshoe there and unfortunately I think Chad Sosnowski potentially involved slightly as well but back single file into the bus stop for the first time you can see live points now I believe these are uh, calculated correctly as Christopher Pies currently in P6 Actually, no, it is still one point off. So I'm just going to subtract one point from Christopher Pies' total until the end of the night, and uh, that'll be your accurate number. For now, though, Bryce Rodriguez leading the way over Michael Polasek, over Logan Grado, over Justin Sang, who makes up one spot in the start. He's now ahead of Robbie Prescott. It's a little bit of a train right now, Ewan, and with a 40-minute race with one pit stop required, this may be what we expected to see in the lead pack. A little bit of fuel strategy, a little bit of saving, and potentially not that all-out racing until those final 20 minutes. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be all out racing for now either. And in the same way, you can't make a pit stop this early either. Christopher Cook uh, coming down pit lane actually for a drive through penalty, it looks like. So uh, that's uh, nothing too much to worry about, although it is going to cost him heaps and heaps of time. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be a waiting game, isn't it? Getting into the group here, getting into the sip stream and just starting to lift off is where you need to be. And that's exactly uh, where the top drivers have gotten to so far. A group of nine seem to have formed themselves early on here. 
And Ewan, you've brought up a very interesting point in our broadcast chat that I think we've just got an answer to. Drop weeks are something to consider in these PCA Sim Racing series. In the seven rounds, you get to drop your worst round. And unlike in some leagues, you can actually drop the final round. So if championship leader Christopher Pies has a bad day, for example, and scores zero points, suddenly, I believe, He'll be back to uh, he'll be back to getting those three points he scored in his previous drop week, and that'll make our calculations even more difficult. Well, it, it doesn't especially. Uh, it, it means that you can only gain 22 points on him on the day, which means that uh, Mark Nister is not going to be involved particularly. It's going to be about Pies Gray. Uh, try and say the second two names at once there. Briggs and Grado. Uh, it's going to be about although Logan Grado needs to win, uh, so it's down to three I, I would say and, and I suspected that at the start of the day as Justin Sang looks like he's getting out of line here and uh, got a slowdown probably out of the bus stop chicane I would imagine that's the case anyway that's created a real big uh, gap in the group now as the top three are breaking away very easy to do we've seen that many times at Daytona over the last week and uh, I don't think it's going to be the last time we see that either if you want a Thomas Briggs update, up to P13. So pretty good start from him. Up eight spots from his starting position. Still not quite good enough, though, you And he needs to keep moving forward, needs to keep that forward progress, and also still needs to hope that Christopher Pies runs into some trouble and falls down the order. I don't know if that's necessarily uh, an easy thing to expect because strategy is going to be a big thing to uh, consider here. That's going to be a big way to move your f way forward in the field. But if you're starting at the back of the field, it's going to be pretty hard to save fuel and uh, think about pit strategy when you're just trying to make moves on track. Exactly, and, the, and there's actually been a lot more movement in terms of that than I was expecting here. I was expecting the front 10 at least to stay absolutely locked together early on, but that's not happened, and part of that is down to the slowdown we just saw for Justin Sang there. Uh, if we can get the fourth and third places connected together again, then the top group would contain 13 drivers, including Thomas Briggs, as we get a view as to just how steep the banking is here at the World Centre of Racing. This is Christopher Pies' view of what's going on, and in front of him, Robbie Prescott, is doing everybody an absolute favour right now. The gap coming down to about a second. And if he can start grabbing some slipstream here, he'll be uh, bringing a further 10 cars, including himself, into the race again. Call him another rung on the ladder. Bring everybody in. Not much has changed in the opening five minutes. The, uh, the only movers have been deeper in the field. Justin Sang has been a reverse mover. He's finally recovered from that slowdown. He slots to the back end of the line in P8. Justin's another one of those drivers, though, who, again, if things just went slightly differently, he probably could have been a championship contender. Had a lot of bad luck, though, a lot of DNFs with a zero-point score. But he's definitely going to be a driver looking forward to next season, I think, which starts in September, you and to uh, keep some consistency up, potentially, and make the next step forward after a slightly tough season. And that's what you've got to do, really. That's what these final rounds are for, if you're not really fighting for anything to build up some momentum and that is a long time until uh, these guys get racing again in a season format if you like so it's good to end it on a high but then again how much does that momentum really carry over when you've got uh, such a period of waiting ahead of you uh, I'm not entirely sure how much it would carry over but it's it's always nice to have uh, and a lot of these drivers are going to be treating this one as just a, a one-off individual race almost like a special event a mini special event where the only thing that matters is the actual finishing position at the end of the day and, and not the wider context of what it means for the series. Logan Grado holding on to a hope and a dream of winning the championship, representing the uh, Golden Gate region. I do love the uh, Golden Gate region of the Porsche Club of America, Ewan, because did you ever watch Mythbusters? Did that ever make it over to you? Uh, no, I've never heard of that before. It's a great show, and they used to always do experiments on uh, the Alameda runway outside of San Francisco. It was just a, an abandoned, like, naval air base where they could do tests with cars and stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, the photo on the PCA Golden Gate Region website is uh, them doing autocross at the Alameda runway. And that's, uh, that's just a dream for a Mythbusters fan. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know what that show is, and I don't know what that... Um... Uh, uh, area or places, whatever do you know. You what, do you know what autocross is at least? Oh, I know what autocross is. Yeah, there we, go. <laughs> that's, we got that's a one start. part at least. Uh, yeah, I got I got to one part, but uh, but there we go. Um, yeah, at least I know where the Golden Gate uh, region is. That's uh, that's a start, and that's more than I can say for a lot of these uh, a lot of these regions, as we've talked about before. But it's great that everybody uh, represents so many different regions 
in the series. By the way, just looking down the uh, championship in terms of uh, different regions being represented, the top 10 all have different regions uh, to their names. So it's a, a real nationwide uh, series in terms of those who have done well. I have good news for you, Ewan. Mythbusters is available for streaming on Apple TV in the UK. I, I don't have that. But... Get yourself an Apple TV subscription and we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll get you watching. You'll love it. But anyway, back to the action. We'll bust our own myths here. We'll, uh, we'll figure out what we can do up front. Grado and Prescott have kind of lost touch with Rodriguez and Polisek. It's become sort of uh, it's become sort of like a Daytona NASCAR race in the uh, the late 2000s. It's a little bit of a tandem draft here. Rodriguez, Polisek, Grado, Prescott, and then uh, Pies and Peterson almost in their own. Nister and Sang. There's tandems all throughout the top ten. Yeah, weird, weird days those were, weren't they? But uh, yeah. but it's it's similar to that at the moment. Scott Castle, by the way, in the YouTube chat, just pointing out something that's significant around here is that he says draft starts at 1.2 seconds in a GT3 at Daytona. But whether that's true or not, I, the the thing I would say about that is the fact that you want to be ideally this close, in my opinion, because then you really get the advantage of fuel saving. If you are getting a bit of a distant draft, then that's all well and good for gaining speed. And, and I'm not saying there's no benefit to it, but there's certainly less benefit than being right up close and fuel saving properly, which, as we've talked about before, I, I think is going to make or break races today. And, and why in qualifying we were talking about practicing your pet entry being so important, too. Here's one of our favorite uh, cars to see once again, the number 913 of Leif Peterson, or is it the number 9913, or is it the number 9139? It's always a mystery, but it is a very differentiable car. Bright yellow, the banana mobile, we can say, the banana boat, and uh, he's having a strong day as well. P6 at the moment. I don't know what his best result of the season is so far, but I have a feeling this may be uh, one of them. Leif Peterson... Evidently, for the uh, the Maverick region, figuring out Daytona. Maybe he spent a lot of time here in the uh, 24 hours a couple of months ago. Either way, it's uh, it's treating him pretty well so far. His best result so far was seventh back at VIR uh, quite a few weeks ago now, over two months ago at the start of February. So it's good to see him knocking on the door of a top five, maybe, Leif Peterson. But we know no stranger to a GT3 machine is uh, Leif Peterson. So... It's not a total surprise, but it's a tough field to get it right in. And, uh, and we've seen this in the Pro Championship before. Really tough field to, uh, uh, to win in as Bryce Rodriguez is finding out at the moment, getting hounded by Michael Polasek, two-time winner this season. We're about to see a move here from Mark Nister on Leif Peterson. Mark in the draft. Is he going to go for a move or is he going to go for the bump draft? He's going to say, I'm going for the bump draft. And into turn one, not close enough to go for a move. Actually lifts off to uh, not even try to go for a move. Nister's definitely thinking about fuel saving right now. And that may be smart because those tandems I mentioned, they have very much been brought together. There's a, there's no longer a two-car tandem up front. Grado joins that train. Prescott joins the train. Pies joins the train. And Peterson and Nister are close enough that they might be able to call themselves part of the train too. Sang as well. Side by side in the background, by the way, for Thomas Briggs, who's still trying to gain points in the field. He's been slowly making his way through. He was 13th after the opening lap, which is a remarkable achievement. But he needs to keep making places so that he keeps making the next group because 13th at the moment is not in the group uh, that uh, he is in at the moment. And so these passes continue to be important. He was on the inside at the West Horseshoe there, but that very nearly ended in disaster. Side by side and even deeper in the field as well. But here's Matthew Siddall running into some trouble. Remember, he got tagged on lap one, spun himself around, and then coming back onto the oval. Very bumpy braking zone there, Ewan. Difficult at the uh, at the best of times. And Matthew Siddall, first victim of that so far tonight. Yeah, he has been, and unfortunately, a victim of a couple of incidents, as you say, and really disappointing for someone to qualify so well. But unfortunately, the race just not go your way at all. And sometimes those mistakes do begin to snowball. That may be what we just saw down there on the sort of entry back to the banking again. That was uh, turn six. But this is very much back on the banking. You can see in the top ten, we've got the interval gaps that show the top eight are probably just about together. As Leif Peterson, the one who's in danger of letting the group split into two pieces at the moment. 
And by the way, points at the top of your screen on the right side are now correct. Christopher Pies has been given oh. 85 points as Chris Brown and uh, James Hooter and Ed Eisenring rather side by side to turn one. Flying off the road goes James Hooth, missing the braking zone entirely with a little bit of contact. Craziness into turn one and a huge drift from James. Wow, that was a big save and at least he didn't grab the wall there because it is very close down at turn number one at Daytona. Another couple of places gained by Thomas Briggs, which he'll be pleased about. And so he is uh, just, what, uh, into the top ten now, uh, just behind Ed Eisenring, who we were talking about there too, in ninth position. Good positions made, uh, to be made up for, by, from him, but... We're already a third of the way through this race, uh, of course, but what a big moment down towards turn one. Shows the dangers, to be honest, of going side by side through there, which we sometimes take for granted. A bit deeper in the field here, Derek Cyphers and uh, Nick Facciolo have been promoted a couple of spots after that kerfuffle into turn one. Derek Cyphers had a very good day at, uh, Im or at Mugello rather, a couple of weeks ago. Qualified far up front, led some laps in the race, didn't quite go his way. And uh, it's switched very much in the other direction here at Daytona oh. P13. Terrible run, though, from Leif Peterson through the bus stop. Mark Nister not lifting, going full speed to take that spot. Around the outside goes Mark Nister. And uh, Justin Sang on the scene as well to take advantage of that loss of momentum. Yeah, Leif Peterson decided to lift off there to let Nister in line. Maybe to protect his own ambitions there because he knew that Sang would have to go on the outside for the long way round. But uh, that is going to surely... I uh, mean, Peterson will prevail here, although Sang doesn't have anyone breaking in front of him, can break a little bit deeper with the ABS into turn number one. Side by side with Peterson on the inside, Sang holding it round the outside, so they'll be level through the chicane, and that will give Sang the advantage heading into the international horseshoe. It's not over still. Side by side, Sang in the bronze on the inside, Peterson in the yellow on the outside. The longer way around doesn't always work, but he's still got a nose barely to the inside, and now he's forced to slot in line. Coming into the dog leg, Leif Peterson, one spot lost last lap, one spot lost this time. Trying to settle back in the rhythm and thinking about that pit stop in a couple of minutes' time to hopefully make up some ground back up. Yep, it's uh, going to be pit stop time very shortly with 25 minutes remaining. We're nearly at the halfway mark, but unfortunately for these three, they've self-sabotaged somewhat because it's allowed the top five to get away and they're the ones really in the front group contesting for this race win. I I'm still unsure about Bryce Rodriguez's credentials as uh, staying up here as well, to be honest with you. I know he's leading right now, but how much fuel is he burning compared to the rest? By the way, I do need to give a shout out to uh, Jesse Lyon, defending champion of this series. Wasn't in championship contention tonight, but uh, unfortunately had to miss tonight. You don't see him in the race because he's actually uh, dealing with graduation today. He's got to graduate. I don't know if that's graduation from high school or graduation from college or graduation from some other kind of uh, postgraduate endeavors. But either way, congrats to Jesse Lyon, outgoing champion. And we'll see him back next season a little bit more educated. Maybe he'll wear his cap and gown. <laughs> a little bit more educated, yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, I don't think it was a lack of education he was missing this season, to be fair, but um, but there we go, he's got that now. Um, bit of an odd time, as you say, in April, but uh, but congratulations to him, and hopefully we'll see him back uh, in season 12, as maybe we do have pit stops. You can understand why James Hoof would come in early to get out of the traffic and maybe just uh, cool those tyres down, if anything, uh, by coming down on pit lane, but uh, other than that, it is a pretty sensible time to come in anyway, given the time remaining in the race I can confirm Jesse Lyon graduating from nursing school he's a nursing student so how good is that very nice yeah that explains all, everything there you go it was a postgraduate endeavor indeed and we know those people spend lots and lots of time doing that so congrats to uh, congrats to the Lions congrats to Jesse if you guys are still watching but anyway back up front little bit of a wiggle for a third for Logan Grado coming through turn six and seven that loses him a little bit of ground to the front of this train loses him a little bit of momentum but does anybody elect to follow James Huth in here is anybody here thinking alternate strategy thinking maybe flipping this around a little bit instead of going the distance and making a short stop at the end and make a shorter stop with more distance in the race while you've got more fuel in the car these are all things to grapple with and these are all things to uh, strategize in your own head because these drivers likely don't have any kind of uh, strategy help here they're all racing on their own it is a solo league for the most part and uh, they got to make all those mathematical decisions in their own head. They do, but it makes you wonder a little bit just, uh, you know, what kind of help they would have 
from maybe teammates who are in the race uh, because we know there are a few of them. Maybe there'll be someone uh, standing by to chat to them or, or whatever it is, but um, we just don't know uh, at this stage. Thomas Briggs has dropped down a couple of places after uh, making some up and getting to ninth at best. He's now dropped behind Chris Perron and Ed Eisenring now. I wonder whether he had a slowdown out of the bus stop chicane. Not entirely sure, but he's going side by side for 11th now. At least he holds on to that. And has not gone the way Thomas Briggs wanted so far. The number 22 with 22 minutes to go. Looking forward, far more spots than I think he really wanted to see. But when you're in a position like that, when you qualify at the back of the field and your championship rival out qualifies you by about 14 spots, I wonder if that's a little bit of a help in a way, because, you know, if things go normal in the race, you're probably not going to win the championship. But if things do go slightly crazy, you may have a chance and uh, you may be in danger of holding out hope that that actually happens. Christopher Cook is in the pits. Nick Melorano is in the pits. We're starting to see some takers, Ewan, but... It tends to be the case in this series that the leaders, they're, they're all pretty synced up and they tend to wait a little while longer. Yeah, I think we'll be seeing these these guys almost run their tanks dry uh, here at the front of the field. There's just so much risk attached with pitting early when you're up front because you'll come out in traffic probably. And I know they're in traffic right now, but the traffic they'll be in if they pit is slower than the bit that they're in right now. So it's probably worth staying out there as they are doing and they'll go past halfway if they continue on one more lap although Bryce Rodriguez last lap was sort of faking it and, and trying to get someone to go into pit lane wonder if he'll do the same here because he was weaving around a bit on the straight there uh, no not really but you can tell we're getting to the end of the stint now because Parsec's getting near I reckon on the lap preceding his stop he might try and overtake Rodriguez to lead onto pit lane Go prognostication from you and O'Leary. I'd say it's uh, I'd say it's more correct than it is incorrect. I think that's a pretty good chance that happens. More correct than incorrect. Uh, yeah. That's that's I'll take that's that. better. That's better um, than some of the bookies. <laughs> I mean, I mean it, it's difficult when you're in his situation here, uh, Michael Parsec, because you do want to get every bit of fuel that you can, and he will be leading the field around four a lap, in which you could do. Some even more fuel saving, I suppose. But what realistically is that going to gain for you on that last lap? You're better off having the trap position. And the reason it's important is because if you think about these guys coming in nose to tail, if he's first, then he'll have a car length, he'll be a car length ahead of everybody else as opposed to one car length behind Rodriguez as he is right now. So that's why it helps to overtake on the penultimate lap of his stints. But maybe he'll just leave it and, uh, and wait for the stops to make his difference. The, any changes this time out coming on to the back straight? Going to be a little bit too far back to make it happen this time, but is that potentially a good thing for Bryce Rodriguez? Does he want a little bit of a buffer when he brings it down pit lane? Because a gap that's about half a second can come down almost instantly onto pit lane. It's a heavy braking zone. It's almost like another corner of the track with how late you have to be on the brakes to get it slowed down for the pit commitment line. It uh, definitely helps to have done a little bit of practice there, and it definitely helps to... Uh, to be in the rhythm because you can definitely make up some time there none of these guys making up any of that time this time though because once again one by one by one by one all the way back to championship leader christopher pies they're going around again no pit stops yet there's briggs oh he's, he's trying to get into the back of ed eisenring to push him along but uh, it, the driver in front of him just pits in and that was quite dangerous if uh, that had gone wrong he would have been tipped into the wall on the left hand side meanwhile Briggs is trying to overtake Chris Brown into turn one and has done so he's made up those two places that he lost a couple of laps ago but he has wasted a couple of laps in terms of progress and he's still now 10 seconds behind his championship rival and now what Christopher Pies needs to make sure he doesn't do is don't get a speeding penalty. When you come down pit lane, you've most likely got the championship in the bag if nothing goes wrong. So make sure to get that car slowed down on pit lane. Don't get a penalty and also don't crash on the outlap, but that's uh, that's easier to control. Pies has one hand on the championship trophy now. There's still eight, 18 minutes to go, though. Anything can happen. We've seen technical issues in some of the championship finales in the last couple of weeks. We've seen drivers coming together and uh, losing the championship because of that. You can't get complacent, even when you're in a, com in a comfortable championship lead. Yeah, the, the most cynical amongst you could say that he had one hand on the trophy after qualifying there because Thomas Briggs being so far back was a real disadvantage and he was always going to miss the front split. He's showing in this race, I think, that 
He is quick enough to put, run up with there with the front guys. His best lap time is only half a tenth off Bryce Rodriguez, as for example. It's six thousandths slower than Mark Nister's in that second group. He's got the speed, in my opinion. He just didn't have the track position to start with, and that's why we talk about qualifying being important here. As I said before, not because it's difficult to overtake, but because track position and being in that front group is so vital, as these guys have managed to do. Now you can see them getting a bit restless. Polasek and Grado noticeably visually closer to Rodriguez, and there's your fastest lap to go with it. And there are a few more takers, Chris Braun and Nick Facciolo. This is a very wide pit window. It's not necessarily what you'd expect when you come into a race that's only 40 minutes long for the pit window to be almost 20 minutes wide, but it has been. We've seen one driver come in at a time. We've seen two drivers come in at a time. It has been very, very separated. Rodney Campbell comes in as well. Gonna wait to see where all those guys blend when the rest of the field comes in. But for now, there's an attempt from Logan Grado on Michael Polasek. Doesn't happen into the West Horseshoe. Slots back in line and if anything, loses a little bit of time from that attempt and loses that little bit more touch with Polasek coming back onto the oval. They're struggling to decide whether that was an attempt or just a, a mistake, was it, into West Horseshoe from Grado. It was an odd line on the way into the corner and he seemed to break a bit late, to be honest, but He's got that safety net of the draft, if you like. He will cruise up to the back of those guys all over again. But now with 16 minutes to go, we really must be getting to the end of this fuel stint for these drivers now. It's been quite a while since some of the drivers have been into pit lane. The likes of Jim Hoof, uh, for example, has been in for uh, four laps. Oh, sorry, been out on the circuit again for four laps in this stint. So it's been a while and we're about to get to the four lap mark sort of into the second half of the race, if you like. It must be nearly time as the gap goes less than two tenths of a second between one and two. This is the second group, now down to just two. They've gotten rid of Leif Peterson. Bryce Rodriguez from the lead, brings it down pit lane on his own. No help, no, uh, no other drivers joining him. He is all on his lonesome here. A little bit of an undercut potentially on Polisek and Grado and Prescott and the gang. Make sure to remember this pit stop time. He pulls all the way to the front of the grid. I believe he got it stopped without having to back up. So well done to him there. And remember that pit stop time. It's been about 12 to 13 seconds for the rest of the field. The clock ticks up now for Rodriguez. 11 seconds, 12 seconds, 13 seconds, 14 seconds, 15 seconds you. And that's a long pit stop for Bryce Rodriguez. It's a bit longer than a lot of the drivers so far. The shortest we've seen was from uh, Nick Facciolo earlier on. 12.9 from him. That's uh, nearly two or three seconds longer there. And you talked about the undercut. Is it going to be an undercut for uh, Bryce Rodriguez or is it going to be an overcut for the others? Because don't forget, Rodriguez is on his own here. He's not got anybody around him. Whereas the four in front are sort of using each other's draft to go quicker. I reckon they'll have the advantage on the outlap too. Rodriguez could find himself from first to fifth or worse here. And luckily, he has found himself in clean air. That's the most important thing when you go alternate strategy like this, to find yourself not in traffic, not getting held up by slower cars. Michael Polasek and Logan Grado up front, though. They know what Bryce Rodriguez has done. They've lost him from their front to view. And now they decide, do we bring it down pit lane? Do we go one more lap? You're going to get your answer here in a very, very short moment. Is there going to be a hard left from Polasek? Yes, there is. Logan Grado, though, comes down as well. Later entry, later on the brakes, and now it's a race in the pits. It is, and they all seem to get it slowed down decent in time. Polasek and Grado were probably the most aggressive of the... Well, I'll say that. Prescott's very close to Grado, isn't he? So he was uh, pretty good on the way into pit lane as well. But absolutely make sure you don't speed. Don't overshoot your box either, uh, as we see them all get in, I think, OK. Now, what are the pit stop times going to be? Justin Sang able to go one more lap around. There's Michael Polisek, 12 seconds. Grado, 12. Prescott, 12. All three seconds faster in the pits than Bryce Rodriguez. Where is Bryce? I think he's coming around into turn one right now. You see him ticking up the order now. Up to P6, up to P5, around the outside of oh. Mark Nister. But that is not going to be good for Bryce Rodriguez. Does rejoin in P5 but far behind Robbie Prescott. That's going to put Rodriguez in overall fourth, most likely. 
It is, and it's going to leave us with three at the front because Christopher Pies has taken the precautions of giving himself an extra lap of fuel. He saw the gap back to Thomas Briggs, said, I don't need to take any risks here at all, so I'm going to take the extra lap of fuel just in case this race goes an extra lap because the only way I can lose this championship is by running out of fuel, or one of the only ways anyway. Briggs does get by Cyphers, gives him one extra point, but he's still not within touching distance of Pies. About eight seconds separate your two championship contenders and about uh, three drivers separate them as well. But the order likely when Justin Sang brings it down pit lane will be Polisek in the lead, going for a 100% win record this season, then Grado, then Prescott. And then it might be a race for fourth between Sang and Rodriguez once that pit stop comes. I don't think it's going to be a battle for the lead as Justin does now bring it down pit lane. It's going to be a blend between him and Rodriguez for potentially the first spot outside the podium. Yeah, we'll see uh, where Justin Sang comes out here. I reckon it's going to be uh, behind Nista but in front of Peterson, to be honest. But we'll see how long the stop is. Uh, and after all of this, there's not going to be very long to rectify the positions. I think Michael Polisek could be on his way to uh, having a 100% win record. And what a remarkable statistic it would be for the driver who doesn't quite win the championship, but does have a 100% uh, success <laughs> in terms of victories for the races they've been in. That is a quite remarkable statistic, if indeed it comes true. There's Justin coming out of pit lane. Rodriguez is going to pretty easily get by him. Christopher Pies is as well. Mark Nister is going to be a little bit close, though. These two are close on track. They're going to be close coming out of pit lane. Tsang does come out ahead of Mark Nister into the International Horseshoe. And in, uh, in slightly comfortable fashion, I should say. About eight-tenths separating them now. But the order is correct now. All pit stops are done. And now... The final 10 minutes of the season, it's going to be all about racing to the finish. No more fuel saving, no more tire saving, pushing 100% and uh, trying to keep those uh, race win hopes alive at least. It's going to be tough for Logan Grado up front though because after that pit cycle, Michael Polisek has tried to fly away. A bad exit out of turn 7 loses him a little bit of time but still almost a 9 tenth gap separating Polisek and Grado. Yeah, he's trying... Uh, here Polisek really really hard to pull the elastic apart and and snap the elastic but he's just not quite managing it Grado is getting that faintest bit of slipstream from eight temps back and as he gets closer and he it will continue to build up more slipstream it will snowball into a bigger advantage for him on the straight he needs a good advantage out of here through the bus stop chicane as well if he can get one and he's pretty level with Polisek, so we'll close again on the way down towards Turn 1. There's Bryce Rodriguez, though. How disappointed is he going to be? Uh, and if he could do this race all over again, I think he would have some different ideas about the way he might perform it. He's definitely going to be a driver I'm looking forward to seeing in the next season because, just like Michael Polisek, he won a race. He was on the podium. He was in the top five, but he wasn't here for the full season, and you have to be here for the full season if you want to win the championship. But uh, sometimes... Commitments come up. Sometimes you're uh, just busy. Sometimes you get promoted early into a, into a series and you don't get the chance to compete for the full season. But uh, alas, it's still going to be a, a top five most likely to end his season. Change for position deep in the field. Uh, the battles go on no matter where you are. And even if you're fighting for P24, even if you're fighting for the last finishing position on the track, you're going to be giving it at all. And Richard Woodruff is certainly giving Lyle Eady the business. Yep, and that's uh, all you can expect here at Daytona. Just great racing up and down the field. And look at this kind of thing going on. And this is the back half of the top 20, if you like, side by side in two rows here. Some dives to the inside at the International Horseshoe to defend places. Uh, absolutely locked together in the infield uh, as this uh, final race draws to a close. Peter Sigourney, Nick Meloragno, Rodney Campbell, Chad Sosnowski, and Rob Rodriguez Jr. Throw a blanket over all of them. It's Sosnowski and Campbell, black and white side by side into the West Horseshoe. Black on the inside is, uh, is going to win out Rodney Campbell, but it switches back. The 26 on the outside oh. now. Chad Sosnowski becomes the inside. Big block is almost three wide goes Rob Rodriguez coming into turn six. Incredible racing for the last couple of spots in the field. And a move around the outside for Rob Rodriguez Jr. 
Yeah, a great bit of battling there. Aggressive, admittedly, going towards turn six, but it was entertaining, that's for sure. And everybody comes out the other side all right, and that's all that you can really ask for. Are we going to see a similar level of nearly three wide up here? Polasek, Gredo and Prescott have the chance to all maybe win this race. Gredo gets closer to Polasek, and now he's right in the slipstream. Prescott set the fastest lap last time round, or he's just done it again with a 43.5. He's getting the full benefit from the slipstream, and he's not being slowed down in the corners either that'll be difficult to beat now and speaking of drivers being promoted from other classes robbie prescott was the champion of the club class last season he actually got promoted into the pros after after his success in the lower class and he has done a phenomenal job today as a, as a driver who was promoted from a lower class hasn't won a race yet this season his best result is uh is scoring 15 points which i believe is a sixth place finish if i remember my uh, scoring system correctly this is the best race he's had all season. He's doing satellite racing proud, and he might even be able to go for this win if everything goes his way. Yeah, might well uh, be able to. As you say, this is best performance of the season, and uh, what a great way to sign off. That certainly is a momentum builder for him, if you like. If we were talking about that earlier on, certainly is the case uh, back there. As we go back to the battle, this is the 16th place. Peter Saguni is the one leading the field and he's in the uh, the blue and green that's just gone wide into the West George shoot. Almost ended up in the green, in the grass, but he's okay. Into turn six, missing the braking zone a little bit. Very, very wide. Melorano, the shorter line back onto the oval, is going to close that gap down just a little bit. You don't necessarily want to run side by side into the bus stop chicane here at Daytona, Ewan. But as we get into these closing moments, as we uh, cross the line this time, it's going to be five laps to go, if I'm not mistaken. You might start to see those more aggressive moves being made, those lower percentage decisions. You might have to do that in the final laps of the season. Yeah, I think it'll be four to go here, by the way, Joey. I think we've only got four left, but we'll see. It's going to be one of those close-run things, I think, as we see Bryce Rodriguez trying to defend here at the moment uh, for this fourth position. Pretty important in the context of this championship because right now, I know that the countback doesn't reflect it there in the uh, standings on your right-hand side, but um, we can't really do that. We just have to figure it out ourselves. Rodriguez has got a race win. Nista hasn't, and I believe that is the countback... Uh, criteria that would get him a fourth place in the standings as things stand so uh, if he loses a place then that doesn't need, that maths doesn't need to be done because he'll drop back however at the moment he is ahead of Mark Nister in the standings as a result of uh, making these defensive moves right now indeed it will be oh Peter Sigourney's run into trouble you and he was leading this train a couple of moments ago we took a look away and now we look back and he's suddenly at the rear end of the train coming into turn one. I think we can probably guess what may have happened. There was finally a bobble from Peter Sigourney with all that pressure behind him. And unfortunately, he falls to the back of the train. Yeah, that's a, a real shame. But exactly what can happen here at Daytona in these close run battles. Unfortunately, uh, one mistake costs you an awful lot. And that's what Christopher Pye is up here in the 14 car. The dark Porsche will be uh, looking at at the moment. How can I, uh, much can I afford to risk here in terms of battling away? Well, absolutely nothing, really. One mistake will send him right the way backwards. And Mark Nister will be very eager to get through. One position and Mark Nister will be fourth place in the championship as well. It's uh, pretty much pretty important for him too. You'd imagine he'll be aggressive to try and make this happen in the last three laps. Riding on board with Christopher Pies. Mark Nister closing down into turn one. Not quite close enough to go for it, but Nister was very, very late in the breaks. Very aggressive as well. Not quite close enough to do it, though. Polisek, though, into the International Horseshoe. Little bit deep, little bit slower than Grado. Grado's been taking away little bits of this gap. He hasn't been tenths faster per lap. He's been thousands faster per lap. All he needs to do is find the rhythm somehow, make sure he can maximize that exit back onto the oval or out of the Le Mans chicane, and he might be able to make this move. Those are the two most important corners, though, and he hasn't been able to do it yet. Is he just waiting? This is what you sometimes see at Daytona. The second driver just waiting for that last lap, protecting their second place because they know that the run to the line is going to be the key one. And if they, they can stay there, they know that they'll be first by the line. Meanwhile, this is just uh, madness going on back here. It's still for 16th on backwards. Despite the fact we've got a new leader of the group, it's not changed anything. Welcome, Chad Sosnowski, to the front of the train. Even if you are fighting for these positions, this is essentially for last. It's for the last five spots in the top 20. 
these guys are going for glory, and uh, most importantly, they're all here for, for fun. It's sim racing, we do this for fun, and uh, no matter if you're fighting for the lead or if you're fighting for 20th, it's still pretty fun to be in a five-car battle like this. Exactly, it's all about fun here at the final race especially, so it's great to see this battle going on and, and just... Uh, what a fun battle it looks to be a part of as we look at Thomas Briggs, who was probably hoping to have a bit more of a fun evening himself. He's ninth, currently losing three points to Christopher Pies instead of gaining double that, which is what he needed to do to win the title today. He's uh, looking for a miracle right now, to be honest. Justin Sang around the outside of Bryce Rodriguez in turn one. Difficult to do the longer way around, but Sang succeeds and does dump Bryce Rodriguez down that critical one spot that puts Mark Nister back and forth in the championship. Rodriguez going for the switchback, though, trying to immediately take it back. Can't get that nose to the inside or the outside, though. The driver from the Hudson Valley just down the road from where I'm calling this race right now. Is he going to go for the dive into the West Horseshoe? He's going to show his nose. He's going to make himself known. He's going to have to wait for a better opportunity, though, to make that repaid. Yeah, I'm not sure that car is handling particularly great at the moment. Around the kink there at the uh, thir fourth turn, excuse me, the left-hander, Rodriguez was really w at the wheel, soaring at the wheel there, really, for correcting a little bit of oversteer. And uh, unfortunately, that's not the best sign of a great handling race car. I'm not sure he's quite got that car underneath him the way he had in the first part of this race. But we'll wait and see how that uh, transpires in the battle for fourth and of course for first position where we're about to get to the last lap when we get to the line and uh, the race will be on then between the front three Need it will white flag in the air one more time around and a bad exit out of the bus stop for logan grado he was within about two tenths of a second coming into it and then loses all that time through that one corner it's the most difficult corner on the track. It requires the highest commitment, but it's also the most important for overtaking, which can be exceptionally frustrating. And even as you see the time come down, it's not going to be close enough for a move into turn one for Grado. It will be close enough for a move into turn one for Rodriguez, trying to repay the favor on Justin Sang. He leads at the line, technically. That's all he's going to need to do on the final lap. But for now, he's going for it the hard way, and the hard way a little bit too hard for Bryce Rodriguez. He gets back in line does uh, and I think that that might be what he's thinking about I got to the line first there so if I just repeat that again then I'll be first at the line again next time round that's what he'll be hoping for anyway so it's all in his hands here really he just needs to get that exit off of the bus stop chicane and uh, that position is his same for Logan Grado who will be looking for that all important exit off the bus stop that's what he's been waiting for all race long it seems certainly in this second stint of the race he's been searching for that exit he's just four temps away now this will be the first part that he needs to nail here six at uh, turn six is key and he's not got it greatly i'm afraid half a second is the gap and he needs a humongous run through the bus drop chicane now to get michael polisek by the line the ultimate pressure on logan grado's shoulders now he has been slower than Polisek through the bus stop all race long, but can he muster up the strength? Can he muster up a perfect run here on the final lap when it matters the most? Polisek leads him through. Grado, a better exit than I think he's ever had, but it may be that little bit too far back now as it becomes a battle in the draft to the line. Michael Polisek has been absolutely perfect in a part-time season so far this year. Won a race at Road America on his debut this season. Won a race at Zandvoort immediately after is he going to be able to hold off Grado in the draft coming to the line Grado below the yellow line but Polisek wins and keeps his 100% win record in this class this season it was only a part-time season for Polisek so it won't be a championship celebration for him but it'll still be another win celebration for Michael Polisek we have to go back to sixth place though as your champion convincingly we didn't have to think about the math we didn't have to do any calculations because Christopher Pies led that contention all day long and the championship leader comes out of Daytona as still the championship leader Christopher Pies is your pro class champion in PCA Sim Racing should be uh, unofficially of course but Christopher Pies should be the champion a great drive from him today and he'll be able to breathe a big sigh of relief now you get the feeling that he would have been very nervous throughout those uh, 40 minutes because it's not a great place to have a finale when you're a championship leader. It's great for entertainment. It, anything can happen, though, but he's done enough. We saw how unfortunate a championship finale can go with Daytona in, the, in some of the previous classes, but for 
Mr. Pies, it's all gone his way. Michael Polasek, though, in the races he's been here, it's all gone his way. And Northern New Jersey cheers as he wins one more time. Logan Grado, not quite Grado enough today, but a P2 for him with a very close finish is still going to make him pretty happy. And Robbie Prescott, his first podium of the season, the driver who was in the club class last season, certainly made his mark in the pros this season. Justin Sang, excellent drive forward from him to finish P4. Bryce Rodriguez rounds out the top five. Christopher Pies may only come home with a P6 today, but consistency is rewarded, and Chris Pies wins the championship in the pro class after finishing second last season. Nister, Peterson, Briggs, and Cyphers round out the top 10. Thomas Briggs coming up short, and I believe coming home second in the championship, if I'm not mistaken. Ed Eisenring rounds out the, uh, the top 11. Nick Facciolo, James Huth, Chad Henson, and Michael Patterson down to P15. Sosnowski, Melorano, Sigourney, Sinclair, and Edie, all of those guys I just mentioned, put a blanket over them for the entirety of the end of the race. Richard Woodruff, Rob Rodriguez Jr., and Chris Brown rounded out the top 23, or uh, Chris Braun, I should say, on the, uh, the lead lap finishers. And then Rodney Campbell was uh, a member of the used car lot, unfortunately, as was Christopher Cook, as was Matthew Siddall. Heavily damaged cars there, and drivers who unfortunately didn't make it to the end of the race. But in the meantime, before we get to talk to our championship uh, winner, Chris Pies, we can talk to the podium finishers today, starting with you, Michael Polasek. Keeping up your 100% win record this season. It got pretty close at the end, though. I don't think I had the greatest car for this race, so I had to get very crafty with my strategy. So at the start of the race, I just let Bryce Rodriguez lead, and I was able to save the extra lap of fuel, and then I really made sure that I had to nail my pit stop, just take just an, enough fuel to get to the end of the race. Unfortunately, I was able to jump Bryce and uh, keep my lead, and from there, it was very stressful trying to keep Logan behind me. I really had to just nail all of my exits and just make every single lap count. But how do you look back on this season now? Because it wasn't a full-time season. You were only here for three races, but you won all three of them. When we get to that next season in September, are you looking for a full championship challenge and potentially going for the full thing? Uh, potentially. We'll see how much time I have. But the three races I had, um, they are a lot of fun. Um, just really nice to jump in and uh, race with these guys. They're all really good people and uh, definitely great racing tonight and the other two races as well. Well, Logan, I'll come to you next because you almost stole it for Michael. You almost broke the 100% win record. How far were you uh, leaning forward in your chair there coming to the line trying to get a couple extra tenths? There you go. Got to make yourself aerodynamic in the car to make that happen. But this was your best race of the season as well, I think we can say. Fighting for the win with Michael all day long. Is uh, is Daytona a place where you were especially attracted to coming this season, or did it just line up with how you drive? Just kind of lined up for me. Um, I felt faster at other tracks than I did here, but he, uh, Daytona is just a really strategic track more than a lot of others. And so uh, it's really uh, a game in our own heads for the first like 35 minutes. And only the last five minutes, you really get to real racing. And you were a championship contender coming into tonight, maybe a, a little bit further back than you would have liked, but looking forward to next season for you as well. Now that you have that experience, that full season of experience in uh, in this season, how much are you going to take into Series 12? And do you think you'll be able to fight for the championship then? Oh, I really hope so. Um, that's that's the goal. So I think I've got the pace. Uh, I've just got to put it together. So. And Robbie will finish off the podium with you. Those familiar satellite racing colors, they were uh, up front fighting for the win for the first time this season. How good did that feel to uh, to be up there tonight? Oh, it felt good. You know, I miss uh, I miss my teammate Jesse, you know. He could have been the other satellite car right there with us fighting uh, with Logan and Polasek, but, but he's graduating from uh, college today, so congrats to him. But it was a lot of fun. Um, this season, I'll use PG words, but has been a total um, bad showing of just getting hit and nailed and spun out, so... I've been just taking the rest of the season, just kind of vibing and chilling. Uh, Logan and I were in the Discord, and I basically just told him I know he's fighting for more than what I am. So I told him I'll be your blocker. You go after um, you go after Polisek. I'm chilling if anybody tries to sneak up on here. So you guys might be going for revenge next season, because Jesse was the defending champion, didn't go his way this season, and, you know, he, he did have to graduate from nursing school and all that. Are you guys coming back next season in, uh, in full force to try and take that championship back?
Indeed. Well, Michael, Robbie, or uh, Michael, Robbie, and Logan, congratulations on your podiums. But we have our champion in the booth now after finishing P6 today. Chris Pies, consistency wins championships, as we always say. And in Series 11 in PCA Sim Racing, you are our champion. Congratulations. Oh, thanks a bunch, Joey. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> consistency was it. It wasn't uh, necessarily a pretty season, but uh, I kept myself out of trouble and uh, ultimately at the end uh, prevailed. I'm, lo I'm looking at your wall right now. I'm trying to read. I see, may your coffee kick in before reality kicks in. And you've got uh, a graduate certificate. Is that from a, a mid-Ohio high-performance driving school of some sort? Yeah, that is from 2013, uh, the Acura Advanced High performance driving course that was the uh i took the three-day school back when i used to live in ohio and that's what started me on this crazy crazy journey to say the least so uh, i've been doing it ever since both sim and real life racing and uh try to get behind the wheel of a car whenever i can it has been crazy indeed but second place last season championship this season i mean you can't really go up from there next season unless you uh, unless you win another championship is that the goal and uh are you more confident now that you've got this first championship in the bag yeah, I'm always, always uh, as the goal is to come out on top on the championship. Um, race wins are always wonderful to have, um, but I've always, from the very first race and the first green flag, focus on the the long term. Um, that's just kind of how I'm geared. Um, I love endurance racing, so I look forward to the the endurance that is a season uh, and trying to prevail or, or demonstrate consistency throughout the season. And it worked for this season, and uh, when season 12 comes along, I'll, I'll be right there and try to do it again, try to repeat. Certainly did season 12 starting in September. So, Chris, we're looking forward to seeing you back. We're looking to see looking forward to seeing all of your uh, championship rivals back as well. And hopefully it'll be a, a fun championship. But until then, congratulations. Enjoy your uh, enjoy your championship status. Make sure you brag to everybody at work tomorrow and we'll see you in a couple months. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joey. Chris Thanks, guys. Pies, champion of the Porsche Club of America. Champion of the world, I guess we can say. Champion of America. Either way, you and this is a uh, a very triumphant end. Your fifth or your sixth champion in uh, in all of our classes, and Chris Pies gets the glory at the end of it all. Yeah, the uh, the cycle is complete, if you like. The champions now crowned in all of our classes, and while it wasn't the most uh, it, it, finale in terms of twists and turns along the way, it was still uh, an interesting one. Kept us waiting till the very end because Thomas Briggs did push uh, quite well during the race. It's, as I said, it's during the race, his best lap time was right up there with some of the best. It's just a shame that his qualifying wasn't quite up to scratch. But a good season overall. And as I said at the time, you know, any season where someone gets a 100% win record during the season and doesn't go on to win the title is a remarkable one. Uh, any champion that only takes one victory out of seven is a pretty remarkable one too. And I always look at these things in terms of the amount of points that a champion takes in terms of a percentage that they could have got. Chris Pies could have taken 175 points today, or this season I should say, from this uh, season 11 of the championship. He only took 100. That's just over half for the champion. That shows you how entertaining it's been from a neutral standpoint. Well, congratulations to all of our champions this season, to Chris Pies tonight, and also to Alan Owens, Kevin San Diego, Mehmet Karachai, Derek Dirksen, and Klaus Nielsen, champions all around. We are very much looking forward to the return of PCA Sim Racing in September. But until then, I've been Joey Tevin. Ewan O'Leary's been Ewan O'Leary. Ramiro Augustine Cisneros has been our producer. And until we see you next time, so long.